So, I was explaining you have to take the professional scope of work very seriously because this particular kind of study like landscape it requires a very strong professional acumen very strong professional involvement and a very strong professional culture. So, what you do is when you get a client who is approaching you for a landscape plan to be done, what you prepare is a conceptual land use plan, landscape plan for him. So, this conceptual landscape plan which will take care of anything that he is considering under his domain of this particular landscape. Once you prepare this, then you prepare BOQ, bill of quantities, technical specifications and tender documents. The BOQ, the bill of quantities will have all the items of works broken into small, small, small items of works and then each item will have be have to be quantified and the quantity will be given certain in certain units and create a technical specification for them. The technical specification is supposed to take care of that how to execute that item of work and what should be the quality level and how it should be checked in terms of quality. So, technical specification also is very, very important item. So, first is a BOQ, the BOQ will have all the quantities of work measured item wise along with the rates per unit and also the computer rate for that quantum of work that is what is BOQ. And then there will be technical specification in which each item of work will be very clearly indicated how to do that and what should be the kind of quality. And then Another thing is the tender documents. What happens is such landscape projects which you are preparing a BOQ and specification you have designed now it has to be executed as you dreamt of. Once you got the approval of the client in terms of its total concept plan, client says I agree this is what exactly I am I will be approving and he approves. You created the BOQ and technical specification then we have to look for somebody who is going to execute it. We call them contractors contractors, constructors, executors, whatever we call it. Now, such group is also a trained group who would be reading your BOQ very categorically and they will understand every item of work. And you have to check their past records, past experiences and also the kind of works that they have done, a value of the work that they have undertaken and then you are going to shortlist them. So, the tender documents which you are preparing will have a very brief drawing. The brief drawing simply means that a construction drawing which will have lots of details I will show you, they will have lots of details the tender document will tender drawing will not have so many details. They will have some rudimentary dimensional things so that the tenderer he can estimate the level of works because in the quantity you are giving a quantity in bulk item wise of course, but in bulk and here he has to really see that whether the quantity that he is considering as a BQ whether it is there in that particular work or not, but you do not have to give very detail in the tender drawings. Now, that makes the tender document within which we will have also many other things like notice inviting tender, general condition of contract, special condition of contracts and such things and all these contracts will have basically the agreement which will be binding this tenderer or the contractor who is assigned this particular job finally and how to get the whole work done through him, so that your work is absolutely executed the way you want it. There will be many other clauses which can be added in this GIC or special terms of condition STC that is like you know uh, whether you are going to put up any penalty clause for the delay, whether you are going to give any incentive for early finish of the work all these are the nitty gritties of this. Maybe sometime we may discuss this at this moment I will skip it. Then you prepare a construction drawing here I am saying that prepare a construction drawing I said then you prepare in fact I will tell you the construction drawing is prepared parallelly simultaneously. When the construction drawing is prepared almost full professionally I can tell you from my own experience that if you have finished your construction drawing to the level of accuracy defined or desired and then you estimate then there will be hardly any deviation from the estimated work estimated as or estimate as you have given the BOQ or the estimates that you are going to incur at site. So, ideal thing is a good professional designer would design the whole thing, prepare the complete construction drawings, then get the estimation done, 
that estimation will be now filled in in terms of quantity in the VOQ and that VOQ will be now going in the tender. Tender is going to estimate the amount of quantity and then finally, when he is going to do the work, he finds there is hardly any deviation. In practice, uh, as per rule, we generally allow at the most 10 percent deviation, but I can tell you if the deviation is least, it speaks good about the designer that whether they have taken it seriously, they have done it rightly and whether the quantity has been correctly done. Of course, there could be some kind of you know situations when because of some you know some disturbances or whatever the quantity might vary a bit, but it is always desirable or there is no really question if the uh, deviation is within that 10 percent of the actual quantity that has been estimated. Okay. Now, the construction drawing is going to have every detail in it, every detail in terms of dimensions are they going to millimeters. So, what happens is when the contractor or executor who is going to work basically they are going to give it to the labors and the labors are going to measure and then they are going to put the things in place exactly as per measurement. So, this construction drawing should not have any errors. In fact, you know literally I will tell you if there are errors then there are opportunities for the contractor to deviate from what is there in the view because he will all cite this error as an example that since the dimension is not there I made it so big and since the dimension is not there we made it so small and the uh, designer cannot do anything. So, ideal thing is that when you make the construction drawing you check all dimensions before releasing the construction drawing for the site it is always better that you doubly check. In fact, professionally I find it is always advisable that if you put somebody on the job who is going to check this and ultimately he checks the entire drawing and finds if there is any discrepancy, it is then if there is an anomaly from one drawing to another because each project might have about 50, 60 drawings. So, if such anomalies are removed it is always better. Okay. Then what you do is you take the supervision into your work. In the supervision what happens is you implement the project. In the implementation stage what happens is this, the, this is the responsibility of the contractor, but you appoint a good supervisor and also as a designer you should also take some time out and periodically supervise the way the work is going on. Your supervisor is going to check everything at place every day and periodically or occasionally if you go and make a random check then probably you will be able to identify if there is any errors or if there is any rectification that is to be done. And then you undertake the annual maintenance operation. This is one particular area I always tell my landscape designer uh, friends that this is an area which is perpetual. What happens is you uh, once you are commissioned the work landscape work, you are preparing concept drawing, you are preparing the construction drawing, BOQs, everything is fine. Then you leave it in the hand of the contractor and you get your fees. If you take the supervision, you get an additional fees, fine. But how about taking the annual maintenance operation? Generally for other equipments we say annual maintenance contract AMC, here I would say AMO annual maintenance operation that you take. Of course, so you do require a very strong team of people who would be working on this and they will do the job. Now, after that you conduct a post occupancy evaluation. Basically post occupancy evaluation you can always do it very methodically or you can also do very very superficially. Superficial is like you designed a park park is executed, people are using it and you go in as a user and keep an eye and ears open and see what people are reacting, how they are reacting, what is their opinion. If they are saying good, you feel good. If they say it is wrong, you do not feel good. The thing is this post occupancy evaluation which is very you know uh, rudimentarily done is by yourself and your friends and your aides. But you can also have a very strong question oriented uh, study done. You can meet people randomly and take their opinion as structure in a question and that you can do. Now, let me show, uh, show you some samples of professional outcome. Say the concept design, I will just show pictures and give you an idea that how things look like. See, this is an example of a concept design in which the buildings, other areas and the entire landscapes are very well <laughs> clearly mentioned. Okay. This concept design will be reviewed by user, by the owner and then it may be a body, a committee of experts, they will approve your concept design and your role will be to explain every aspect of it. 
in this particular concept design everything is graphically done nothing has been annotated what is this annotation if you take you know just take an arrow make an arrow and you write something and people get automatically you know dictated to this particular items okay that is another way and basically the annotated drawings are better in uh, whenever it is being reviewed in your absence if you are not there you, are, you don't have any opportunity of explanations it should become self explanatory okay so if the concept design is this i'm just showing you two pictures one after another the same concept design which has been given a shape in reality which looks like this now i will go back look at this this is the concept design looks something you have to understand what is likely to be in future and now if you see that this goes into the reality this is what is the result of it it simply indicates that your concept design should have all the components all the items which can be very clearly explained in the drawing itself because nobody has such strong visualization power that one can visualize exactly what is going to be in, in reality okay another example concept look at the reality this is what it is basically one group of experts that is the landscape designer means you and your team would be able to visualize this much better how the best with whatever style or whatever techniques you use i can assure you that you may not be able to create exactly the same kind of visualization in 3d's also but however nowadays with the help of computers and all the very advanced softwares we are trying to emulate exactly what it should be in in, in the reality and with all these cgi's and all that we are being able to do it to a great extent the idea is whether the client has understood okay next next you look at this this is another concept plan so basically what is there in the concept plan it is at the ground level plan that you are preparing so at that ground level slightly above you are showing that what are all these items okay especially the building elements the paths the trees now in the concept plan what happens is the location of trees or the position of trees that you are seeing that's not exactly where it should be it is only pictorially it should look good pictorially it should look attractive but when it comes to the real drawing in such cases there will be a technique or there will be a grammar of putting all these plantations in a particular sequences i will discuss that later okay this is the concept drawing i'm just showing one more as a concept 3d presentation okay that means people will have some idea that what it is going to be once it is constructed so this is also important in the concept plan preparation you try to prepare as far as practicable or as far as achievable 3d images earlier what you uh, in the absence of computer we used to do it with the hand we used to make three dimensional sketches and that used to make a good senses and people used to have two three four views but now with the computer you can make multiple views the way you want okay now the next one this is another it looks like almost like a sort of artist impression so basically what happens is all these 3d's we call that as artist impression why we call that as artist impression the reason is this that here the people gets the idea what the artist is visualizing so artist is visualizing what you are visualizing quite often the landscape architects are equally competent or maybe better competent more competent than even a visualizer okay next this is a representation of a concept section so what happens is in this the section has been drawn like a technical drawing like is if i would say that this is the section line which has been drawn with all those pits and mounds and such other things and embankments and water body and rest of the things are you know emulation or image of trees and other this also gives a clarity in the mind of the viewer that means the owner when he is seeing your section he also makes it gets it very very clear okay then comes concept elevation look at this here the landscaping is a part of the building elements and as a building elements you know you just try to show trees and all these are all representative this may not be exactly to the tune of the kind of tree that you are going to have 
the trees will have different shapes and it is best if you could almost emulate what kind of tree is going to come and what is your profile. But this is how the concept elevation looks like. These are minded semi technical drawing and these are very dimensional they are not arbitrary everything is dimensional. And then another one this is a section in which you will find that every element every elements are annotated shown with the building elements and how the tree is going to be planted over there how the planter box is going to be all these are a part of it. So, this is a technical section now see another technical section look at this drawing looks very cluttered very clumsy. Now, this particular technical drawing has lot of annotations mind it the thing is these annotations are very meaningful very useful do not bother about the quality of the drawing entirely if it is totally cluttered because each and every element unless told you will not be able to visualize. So, this particular drawing is very very technical drawing in terms of plan. So, I, I have shown you one plan earlier where there were no annotations I am showing another plan where there are annotations do not bother about the clutteredness of this what is most important is how much communicated elements are there that means people know exactly what you are giving. Now, here I am going to show you few of my own projects works ok. Now, this is one of the township landscape plans which I have prepared for Bindachal NTPC township. Now, this is a kind of drawing if you really look at the drawing it looks very very cluttered and looks like any other construction drawings and that is important. The thing is it should be here every location of the buildings are there and then the trees are also located not to detail. In fact, this is the broad layout plan and this for showing the plantation in all those areas it has almost generated nearly 30 drawings to show the plantations in all other places. Now, this is another one in the same project another one in the same Bindachal NTPC's domain it is a Russian complex look at the drawing in which you can if you can make out that there are plantations here there are houses here uh, there are roads there are grids giving dimensions and everything is dimensioned this is how the working drawing is or construction drawing is it must have all the trees names and its numbering here and the dimensions. So, that there is no mistake in creating this I will show you another one look at this. Let me show you one more in detail. Yeah, this particular drawing which has the same township where the drawing is having only the canal location shown absolutely with dimensions and some idea of the plantations. And this is another detailed plantation drawing. and this is the embankments the canals are there the canal embankments that means this particular working drawings are as good as rather same as any other engineering drawings. So, never consider that uh, your landscape plan is nothing but a colorful pattern making game no one more look at this it is a recharge pit that means on the canal in the bed I will discuss this when I will be talking about the drainage plan later that there are recharge pits where in case there is a excess of water that should be allowed to go in or in case there is a ground water here that should be allowed to come up. So, that is the recharge pit we have and look at this one this is the NTPC Bindachal's power plant it has a it has nearly say 15 drawings to indicate the total landscape plans I am just showing you one layout plan in which there are everything is shown the mounds the plants and every other aspects are shown. the sections the landscape sections which has the mound size slopes location of plants their positions and the sections. I am just showing you one representative plan for contour evaluations if suppose any area which has been if the landscaping is being done around this particular building the contour has been evaluated contour has been graded. So, it is a contour grading plan. So, basically what will happen is your, your construction drawing will have multiple such things. So, ultimate outcome whenever you are planning it can be ranging from such kind of large housing areas to a clubs and such country homes it can be to the level of parks it can be to the level of greens urban greens 
it can be to the level of small extension housing area greens and even to the interior. So, all together basically what happens is if you follow the same items as I said for the scope of work you will find that this will be very very ideal. Now, I am putting two slides here one for the glossary this you will go through this glossary generally is covering all the items that has been covered within this lecture and also a brief bibliography. So, idea is this particular set of lectures is supported with this glossary and bibliography it is not end all there will be many other items. So, every sequential lectures as soon as one particular aspects will be discussed there will be a set of bibliography and a set of glossary of terminology and so that at by the end you will have a full set of glossary and full set of full set of bibliography. So, here what we have learned is all about the categories of landscapes to the scope of work and what lies ahead is the history we will be discussing in the next set of lectures the history of architecture. Thank you, thank you for listening.